with some more analysis on this from our very own Gita Fakhri, who hosts TRT World's flagship program, Inside America. She joins us live once again from her home studio in Bethesda, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. here. Uh, Gita, wow, I found that debate to be very refreshing, but we certainly spoke prior to this about the very challenging job of the moderator. How do you think Susan Page did? Well, Kilmany, she did quite well in that there was a lot of ground that was covered. Her questions were good, but I felt that from the beginning she allowed Pence to get away with not answering some of the key questions that she asked, and there weren't enough, if any, uh, follow-ups, in fact. I think she allowed Pence to set his own tone from the beginning. He used it to put Senator Harris, in fact, on the defensive on more than one occasion, even though Senator Harris kept saying to him, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking, and if you allow me to finish, we can then have a conversation. But he certainly was on message. He had his talking points. And in fact, he went over uh, the allotted time on several occasions and again was allowed by the moderator, surprisingly, uh, to, to not answer key questions. Like one of the questions that came out at the very beginning where uh, Susan Page asked Mike Pence, have you had a discussion with the president uh, about a potential transfer of power? Now, this has become a crucial question here in the United States, uh, given the fact that President Trump has COVID and more and more people have been bringing up the issue of the 25th Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, that is the potential temporary transfer of power uh, in a case uh, where the president might be incapacitated. So not that this is likely to happen, but he completely dodged and sidestepped the question and uh, said he'd rather go back and pick on the question that Senator Harris had been uh, talking about and discussing, which was uh, a potential vaccine between now and the election. So I thought that he was able to get away with a few too many non-answers. But other than that, uh, the moderator did well in covering a lot of ground. I just wish we had seen uh, many more follow-ups and trying to keep both candidates to answering the question before moving on to the next one. Yeah, that's a great observation. Overall, Gita, how do you think the candidates performed this evening? I, look, I think, again, Kilbany, uh, Pence was very sharp. He was focused. He was composed. I think he came across as uh, presidential. Uh, he had that serene aura about him, which he typically always does, doesn't betray any nerves of any kind. Senator Harris, on the other hand, was seen taking notes on several occasions. Her body language might have betrayed some nerves. Of course, she is under far more scrutiny, I believe, as a woman poised to become the first female vice president of the United States. Uh, so her every movement, her every facial expression will be scrutinized. And just looking at some of uh, what the, the pollsters here in the U.S. have been tweeting about, talking to uh, the undecideds. And it's interesting to note that four years ago, 50 uh, percent of uh, voters were undecided. Today, there's about 5 percent. So these undecided voters apparently reacted to Vice President Pence as being perhaps uh, the more professional looking. Of course, it, it depends on who you ask and felt that some of her facial expressions uh, sometimes went a little bit overboard. But again, uh, being a woman, I think there's always that sort of different bar that you are often judged by, as uh, Hillary Clinton would attest to. Well, if Susan Page managed to lack some follow-up questions, she certainly managed to whip through a lot of topics. There was quite a lot of ground covered in this evening's debate, including major and foreign policy decisions. Uh, that includes the controversial decision that the Trump administration to, took to take out Iran's General Qasem Soleimani. What did you make of the candidate's take on this administration's handling of Iran, Gita? Well, again, I think here uh, Pence tried to score a point by pivoting as well and dwelling on this uh, issue, the assassination of General Soleimani, which uh, typically uh, played quite well with the American public. They tend to see issues relating to Iran from a very sort of specific uh, single prism and lens. So he knows that this sort of thing would play well. And from there on, he went on to the issue of uh, the Trump administration moving the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem. Uh, another point that he knows 
plays well with the American public at large and obviously even more so with uh, the evangelical base, uh, the core supporters of President Trump. On the other hand, Kamala Harris was uh, critical of the administration's uh, handling of Iran. She says the U.S. is now less safe than it once was uh, when it certainly had the deal, the nuclear deal with Iran still on the table. So a lot of back and forth on this issue. But I think at the end of the day, uh, these foreign policy discussions, as interesting as they might be to us and to a global audience, they do very little, if anything, in affecting the way people vote in U.S. presidential elections. They do not move the needle very far, if at all. I think the key issue to see and the key factor at the end of the day, and there's, what, three weeks left before, um, before people head to the polls, four million uh, American voters have already cast their ballot. At the end of the day, it'll be about voter turnout. And I think the pandemic is obviously uh, making it more and more likely that this will be one of those record-breaking uh, turnouts in recent presidential elections. All right, Kita Fakri, I hope you'll join me for the next debate because it's been really great to have your analysis. And for our viewers around the world, make sure you tune into Gita's show, Inside America, where she breaks down uh, major national and international political issues with high-profile guests on her show. It's a good one to watch. Thanks, Gita.